here. Let me share my screen. Oh, whoops, and that's the last slide. We'll start at the first one. That's probably the best place to start. Okay. Oh, I have a chat. Go, Maddie. Thank you. <laughs> it's another. Okay, so I am going to, can you guys all see um, the presentation here? Just the first page, record retention? Yeah, okay, good. All right, so happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful week planned with your families to stuff your face with pie. I know I do. Um, and so we will get started on this Township Tuesday to start it off right. And so we know a little bit more about record retention. All right, so let me see if I can do this with my arrows here. No, I can't. Okay, that's fine. Um, It's not so oh, there it is. Okay. Did it switch slides for you guys? It doesn't show it on my end that it switched sides. Yeah, we're seeing the what is a record slide. Okay, perfect. Good. That's what I want you to see. That's exactly what I wanted you to see. Thank you. Um, okay, so first we're going to start off with uh, uh, what is record? I mean, uh, government records are defined as any state and local record, including all cards, correspondence, discs, maps, memorandas, uh, microfilms, papers, photographs, recordings, reports, tapes, writings, optical discs, data, information, documentary material. The list goes on and on and on, um, regardless of physical form or characteristics or uh, what media condition it's in. Um, and it has to be made or received by an officer or agency of the state, um, or in this case, a township, uh, and retained for the business use of an officer or agency. So basically, that's a really long-winded way of saying it's anything with information relating to township functions, no matter what format it's in, electric, paper, microfilm, um, any of those things. So all of those things constitute a record and it needs to be uh, stored in a certain ways. So this is a little bit different than the definition of government data, which is defined in Minnesota Statute 1302 as all data collected, created, received, maintained, or disseminated by any government entity, regardless of its physical form, storage media, or conditions of use. Um, now, only towns located in the seven county metropolitan area have to comply with the Minnesota Data Practices Act. So that will be outside of the presentation uh, for today. And the Minnesota Data Practices Act is pretty complex. So if you do have questions surrounding data practices, um, you can reach out to me separately and we can work through it. Otherwise, there is a document on our website, TM5000, that has a little bit more information around that. But that's not what we'll be covering today. Today is just um, record retention. So a little bit different. All right, so next we'll talk about um, different types of records. Uh, different types of records are all uh, listed here. Is it the, is, can you see types of records? No. How about now? Nope. What the heck? Is it still what, are, what is a record? Yeah. yeah so Manny, what I usually do is, um, maybe, do you have a, several different screens going right now? Yes. I think that's the problem. Now we can see whatever your, whatever, wherever your cursor was, that was the right screen. Yep. So oh, you can just see this screen? Yep, that's what we can see, yep. Oh, okay. Now we see it, you got it. All right, well, I'll just keep it there. It'll be easier that way. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so, um, different types of records um, includes in, uh, tons of things, all the things listed here. Um, and minutes include anything in, that involves regular meeting minutes, special meeting minutes, emergency meetings, um, road tour meetings, annual meetings, all of those minutes um, are records. Uh, resolutions, ordinances, 
road orders, vacations, easements, map spills, emails, you get the idea, text messages, um, photos, phone calls. If you keep a logbook, that would be considered a record. Um, financial records that are kept by the clerk and treasurer, including claims, receipts, registrars, ledgers, payroll, um, all of that information um, is a record. Um, in most cases, the original record needs to be kept, but in some cases, a copy will do. Um, a lot of times that has to do with older records, and if you keep the copy on um, in an electronic form, um, that's kind of a, an instance where that would work. Um, everyone involved in town functions should be aware of what a record is at the very least so that they know when one is created um, and needs to be turned over to the town clerk. If the clerk doesn't know it exists, it won't be recorded and maintained. So um, any text messages, emails, voice messages, letters that are received by the town board or anyone involved in town functions, um, they should be aware that that is a record and something that should be kept on file if it has to do with town business. Um, reorganization time serves as a great reminder uh, if the board wants anything recorded that it needs to be turned into the town clerk. So if you just want to make that as a note to bring up in your meetings to remind everyone, um, hey, if you have anything that needs to be recorded, let me know. So um, we'll move on to record retention requirements. So townships must retain all records unless they adopt a record retention filing system. Um, Matt develops a re developed a record retention filing schedule with the State Administration Department and the Minnesota Historical Society. Um, and that's available on our website as RR1000. Now uh, I'll go over that in more detail in a little bit here and kind of walk you through how to use that and what's important on that document. But the state records disposition panel um, are the people who review and approve these schedules. So if for whatever reason, the schedule that we have available um, and that the historical society has available for townships doesn't work for your township or doesn't really make sense for you, you can always submit a new schedule to the disposition panel and have them um, review and accept or um, deny that. Um, proposal. So, but the one that is on our website and the Historical Society's website is catered towards townships. So it should make sense for most townships. Um, if you have something that isn't included in that, you can always uh, write to the state records disposition panel and see if you can have a separate schedule included in that. So um, the schedule basically gives the townships ongoing authority to dispose of records under Minnesota statute 138.17. So it, it, without that, you would need to request every time you destroy a record um, and it just becomes pretty tedious. So that schedule kind of just gives ongoing authority to do so. Um, why do we do this? Uh, it's required. Minnesota State Statute 15.17 specifies that all officers and agencies of the towns within the state shall make and preserve all records necessary to fill um, an accurate knowledge of their official activities. So the statute requires that we keep these record logs and it further delineates the responsibility to the agency's uh, administrative officer, which is, for townships is the town clerk. So the town clerk is in charge of kind of making sure that we have all of these records retained in the appropriate place for the appropriate amount of time. Um, got all government entities must establish an ongoing record management program, keep record inventories, and create record retention schedules uh, specified by retention periods and disposition type under Minnesota Statute 138.17 Subdivision 7 and Minnesota Statute 138.19. All right, so this is where I'll talk a little bit more about the records retention schedule. Um, this picture, by the way, is someone made cows out of filing cabinets, which I thought was the most Minnesota thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, and probably not a good way to restore or to store your records, but I thought it was cute anyways. <laughs> um, so the records retention schedule establishes uh, minimum retention periods for township records based on their administrative, fiscal, legal, and historical value. So uh, 
The schedule applies to all forms of the record, digital, paper, microfilm, any kind of form that it comes in. And you can find it, that schedule again on our website under RR1000. And the Minnesota Historical Society also has a copy of that same schedule available for townships. They have one for cities and other kind of government entities too, but obviously townships is the one that pertains here. Um, before the schedule is adopted by the township, um, the board must pass a resolution adopting the records retention schedule. And we have a sample resolution for that very purpose on our website under RR2000. Um, so they must, the board must adopt a resolution and send two copies of the completed notification form to the state archives, which in our case is the Minnesota Historical Society. Um, that uh, notification form can be found on the MAT website as well, and it's listed as the notification of adoption of township general retention schedule. So you would need those two things, the resolution and the notification which you should have on file once the Historical Society sends you a copy. Okay, so if you don't know, if your township is participating in a records retention schedule, obviously the first thing you would wanna do is look for those two things that I just mentioned. Um, check if there's a copy of the permission letter or the notification of adoption, and then check if there's a resolution. If you can't find one of those two things, um, you would want to contact the Minnesota Historical Society to get confirmation. Maybe you lost the notification letter or something along those lines, um, but you likely don't have a records retention schedule if you do not have both of those things. All right. And then next I'll talk to you a little bit about the um, record retention schedule filing system. Um, this includes, the filing system includes the location, the length of retention required and whether or not the um, record can be archived. Uh, this is a snippet here from the first page of the schedule. And I'll go over each of these sections individually, just so we have a little bit more detail on what each of these mean. Um, if any record isn't listed in the general schedule um, or is kind of no longer created and it's reached the end of its usefulness and uh, can't be destroyed because of this schedule, um, you can always submit an application for authority of, to dispose of records to the Historical Society, or not to the S Historical Society, excuse me, the uh, Records Dis Disposition Panel. Um, and that's available on the Historical Society website, the application, um, and it's their PR1 form. But basically the authority to destroy records either has to come from this record retention filing system or the um, application for authority to dispose of records. So those are kind of the two ways you can achieve um, getting rid of these records that you no longer need. Um, the Historical Society in general just has a lot of really good information. If anything in here is confusing or um, they just have a lot of uh, PDFs and things that walking through this stuff. So it's really helpful if you wanna take a look. All right, first we will talk about location here. So location matters quite a bit. Um, it's key to maintaining these records. Minnesota statute 15.17 uh, states that all government entities shall make and preserve records necessary to full and accurate knowledge of their official activities. Now, if the records aren't accessible, they are not preserved to give knowledge of activities because no one can get a hold of them and take a look at what those activities might be. Um, many records, uh, because of their relatively short retention period, will be disposed of directly from the office, uh, but others will be retained in storage areas for a long time after being removed from the office. Uh, the purpose of a record storage area is to keep inactive records out of high cost office space and transferring them to a more low cost storage area um, for efficiency and to uh, make sure that you save some dollars and not just taking up half of a building with uh, records. 
Uh, it's important to make sure that the records are in a safe space that will not result in the uh, tragic case uh, of this picture here. Obviously, that was not a very good way to store those records. Uh, think of any possibility that could have happened in that space. Think of potential destructive things such as mice, bugs, mold, water, fire, explosives, I don't know, anything that um, you think could occur in that space um, and try to protect those records from that. And the type of container always matters. Um, make sure it's waterproof, um, that it has permanent retention if the records are required to be retained permanently. Make sure that you use special caution when storing them to know that they need to be permanently retained. Um, we know and the uh, Historical Society knows that the ideal environment is not always feasible, but it's important to make a good effort to store these records in a standard box, um, at least six inches off the ground, make sure um, you're avoiding any flooding in a cool, dry, fire resistant room that can be kept locked against any unauthorized entry. Also, um, it's pretty inexpensive to have exhaust fans or portable dehumidifiers, which will help maintain a record um, storage room that would be suitable for long-term record keeping. Next is retention. The retention column um, in the schedule dictates how long a township needs to retain these records listed. Uh, and it really depends on the legal, fiscal, and historical value of each record. Um, that'll help you determine how long you need to be need to keep it. If it's constantly um, looked at, then you want to keep it close to you so you have it available. But uh, if there's a lot of value to it historically, you'll want to keep it for a really long time. Uh, the record retention schedule kind of determines retention in three different terms. The first term is uh, time. For example, retain for four years or retain permanently. The second term is an event. So retain until there's an audit or retain until the case is closed, those scenarios. Um, and both of those terms um, could exist as the third one. So the third one is both retain for six months after the audit or retain for uh, three years after the case is closed. Excuse me, I hit the microphone, sorry. Um, if retention is permanent, obviously the best thing to do is look for a permanent solution or archive with the Minnesota Historical Society. And that brings us to the third row there on the schedule, which is archive. So an archive, is a place where public records or historical materials are preserved indefinitely, typically. Uh, the Minnesota State Archives has a complex organizational history. Currently, we have the Department of Minnesota Historical Society as our archives, um, which is a private nonprofit organization chartered in 1849. So the column on the schedule here um, that says archive just says Y or N, which means yes or no, um, meaning can it be archived? Yes or no, will the historical society take it? Um, if it's a yes, you can transfer the records to state archives. Uh, this is quite a process and the Minnesota Historical Society provides a lot of general guidance on their website for how to go about doing that um, and how to go about managing all of these records responsibilities. I thought that one really helpful record was preserving and disposing of government records. That was a PDF that was had a lot of really good information in there. So if you are in the process of kind of taking inventory of your records and seeing which ones need to be archived, they're a really good resource for that. Um, also, if you just really are lost and have so many you can't face it, a lot of times the um, archive staff can visit your entity and inspect your records at no cost to you. So they can help you determine what needs to be archived, what can be archived, um, and how to kind of prepare them for being archived, which is a really nice service that they provide. Um, Although keep in mind, once records are transferred to the state archive, ownership of those records passes to the Minnesota Historical Society. So they can only be uh, viewed and uh, accessed during normal business hours with a staff member from that point on. 
So just be aware if you wanna do that. Um, okay, so understanding your own process. The record retention schedule um, can be contradictory in some places. There's one spot that says minute book, the other spot says minutes, which seemingly are the same thing. Um, it just kind of depends on how you keep your minutes in your township. Um, the, the minute book um, says that they need to be stored, the minutes, the minute books need to be stored in a fireproof file and archived um, permanently. And the minutes clarify that the minutes can be subdivided as needed by month or regular closed meetings, subdivided to whatever makes sense to you, um, filed permanently. So just because the location says file instead of fireproof doesn't mean that it doesn't need to be stored in a fireproof container because it does still need to be permanent here, as you can see. So um, the important thing is just, uh, remaining the same throughout uh, clerks and throughout time. So make a note on your retention schedule uh, as to which one you do, um, whether you subdivide or collect the minutes for a given time period um, and where those are stored so that the next clerk knows uh, which one to go by and which one to listen to. And making notes on the schedule is always Sorry about that. Making notes on the schedule is always a good idea just to make sure that everybody knows what the rules are and what the procedure has been. All right, and then finally, I will talk to you a little bit about destruction of these documents, the fun stuff. Um, <clears throat> uh, your, as we discussed earlier, your authority to dispose of the records um, either has to come from that retention schedule that we talked about or the application for authority to dispose of records form, which is available on the Minnesota Historical Society. Um, according to Minnesota Statute 138.17 sub 7, your agency must maintain a list of the records that are disposed. Um, so whenever you dispose of records, you should fill out a records destruction report using the schedule or um, whatever schedule you have adopted for your township. Um, that's available on that website under records destruction report. And um, when you're filling out this report, uh, make sure that you show a copy to the board, record that the board reviewed the copy and then file it again with the town clerk. So make sure that everybody is aware of these uh, files being destroyed. Um, or you're getting rid of and what you're getting rid of so that it, there's just a, more transparency throughout the, um, the entire board. Um, as with the schedule, decide on a method that to complete the destruction report because there are a couple different ways you can fill that out depending on how you go about with your schedule. So um, decide on a method that works for you and make sure that you, again, write that down for the clerks after and um, so that everything is maintained the same way. So there's no confusion down the road as to what happened to this thing. Um, everybody knows where the records have gone. Um, there's no specific requirement on how to get rid of records. Obviously, if it's private or personal information, you'll wanna get rid of it in a way that um, prevents others from seeing it, shredding it, or something along those lines. Uh, local ordinance can dictate what procedures need to be followed, but generally recycling um, is preferred. State agencies can also contact the Minnesota State Government Resource Recovery Program uh, for assistance in recycling any documents that need to be destroyed, gotten rid of. All right, and that is everything that I have about records retention today. Happy Thanksgiving again. I hope you all um, stuff your faces with delicious pie and turkey and have a wonderful afternoon. All right, how do I stop share there? Does anybody have any questions for me? No? All right, well then I think that is all. Have a wonderful afternoon, everybody. Um, and have a wonderful week with your families. Thank you. Thanks, Maddie. Yep.